It is said that something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wings can ultimately cause a hurricane halfway around the world. In World War II, this concept, known as the butterfly effect, was rife. If you think about it, your ancestors may have only survived because an enemy sniper decided for some reason to hold his fire, meaning that this seemingly insignificant decision at the time ultimately led to the existence of the very person watching this video. With that said, in today's video, we'll be looking at five decisions that, although seemingly unimportant in the context of the time, changed the course of history forever. Now, I know this one's kind of a blanket point, and Hitler's poor decision making as a result of his volatile emotions was a common theme in World War II, but the Battle of Britain, in my opinion, was Hitler's biggest blunder. Prior to September of 1940, Hitler's raids over England were initially restricted to military and industrial targets, forcing the Royal Air Force into an extremely weakened and reactive state. However, what turned out to be the crucial decision was made to retaliate by attacking civilian targets in Berlin. This decision caused Hitler, who was blinded by rage, to almost exclusively target British cities and erase them from the map. You may be wondering what the butterfly effect has to do with this point, but due to this error in judgement, the RAF were afforded some breathing room, and subsequently, when Hitler approved Operation Sea Line to launch a full-scale invasion into the Europe's last bastion of freedom, the RAF were able to respond and Hitler was forced to shelve the operation only a few days later. This was probably one of the most crucial moments of the war. If Hitler thought rationally about the situation and continued bombing RAF targets, British resistance and morale would have degraded to the point where Operation Sea Lion would have likely been a success. If this were to be the case, Hitler would have likely fixated on the seizure of British land instead of changing his sights onto the Soviet Union, which would have ultimately meant the complete subjugation of Europe, and after that, we can only guess what would have happened. On August the 9th of 1945, it was a cloudy day in Kokura, Japan, and it just so happens that the United States of America originally chose this bustling industrial complex to be the site for its second atomic bomb. With that said, however, the bomber pilots had specific instructions to only drop the bomb if they had visual confirmation of the various weapons and armament factories in the city. The heavy cloud coverage over Kokura that day, however, forced them to continue flying to Nagasaki, where they of course ended up dropping the second atomic bomb there instead. The many consequences of this small and seemingly insignificant occurrence of clouds will forever remain a mystery. It essentially means one city had innumerable amounts of Japanese family and ancestry lines decimated whilst the other didn't. Who knows, maybe someone further down the line of a family in Nagasaki could have developed the cure for cancer, but as I said, we'll never know. On July 20th of 1944, a disenfranchised German officer known as Colonel Klaus Schenk Graf von Stauffenberg arrived at a heavily guarded Nazi complex called the Wolf's Lair, with a bomb in his briefcase meant for Adolf Hitler. As many of you know, this was a carefully orchestrated plan that aimed to quickly seize control of all of Germany and its controlled countries. However, it relied on Hitler actually dying for it to take effect. All looked well, and when von Stauffenberg placed the briefcase near Hitler and left the room, he thought the explosion that subsequently followed would have for sure killed Hitler and other important generals too. That said, in order to get a closer look at the map Hitler was pointing at, General Heinz Brandt moved the rigged briefcase behind a table leg and subsequently, when it went off, Hitler was unscathed. Although after this the plan still went ahead, because Hitler was able to confirm he was alive, a complete overthrow just couldn't happen, and the SS and Gestapo quickly got in control of the situation and ended up executing the conspirators. If Hitler had actually died that day, it's extremely likely the war would have as well, as von Stauffenberg and his colleagues were very pessimistic about the future of Germany in World War II. So, with the previous point, we stated that the war could have ended almost an entire year earlier if it wasn't for yet another small and innocuous decision. In this one, however, we'll be detailing the time where the butterfly effect could have actually prevented the entire war from taking place. When aspiring art student Adolf Hitler applied to the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, he was rejected twice. These rejections led him to living in the slums and developing an extreme hatred for the Jews. 
which led him to spend his time climbing the ranks of the German army and eventually creating the Third Reich, instead of spending his time on figure drawings and becoming the next Picasso. The smallest of choices have the greatest of consequences, and this last point illustrates that more than anything. Gavrilo Princip was part of a group called the Black Hand, who were tasked with assassinating Archduke Franz Ferdinand. When a previous attempt failed, he felt a pang of hunger and decided to go to a local cafe to grab a sandwich to eat. Little did he know that Ferdinand's motorcade would stall right outside the cafe he was at and give him a clear shot, which he of course gleefully took. It was effectively this one gunshot that triggered the events for World War I and by extension World War II as well. So if you really want to be dramatic, one could say the simple decision to eat a sandwich caused over 80 million deaths. And that's pretty much it for today's video about the butterfly effect in the world wars and as per usual, I'm always interested in hearing other stories, especially if they come from your relatives who fought in a war. For example, I wouldn't be here if the Japanese technicians who crafted the bomb that was dropped on my grandfather's ship did a good job because it was faulty and it didn't actually explode. So stories like that I'm always keen on hearing. And if you are enjoying the channel guys, please do consider donating to Patreon because a lot of my videos actually turn out age restricted or demonetized due to the nature of the content and YouTube's kind of PG-13 setting we have these days. So any dollar helps and I'd like to thank my current patrons, Liam Richardson and Charlie Cousins for their continued support. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something new.